Why are you talking like that? Who's singing? You and that? Casey, I'm Devontae. <laughs> A little known fact about me. Oh, God. <laughs> when I was younger, um, when I was in the singing group, shout out to Suave, my boy B. Rhodes. Um, anyway, when I was younger, I really wanted to be Devontae. Like, I thought I was Devontae. I had the voice. Hey, what's up, ladies? It's your boy, B. Love, checking in. Welcome back, everybody. This is She. And I, I am your host, be love. And like always, I have my beautiful, can I say that? You look good today. You got the hair flowing. Host with me. You so look Molly good every day. Here we go. Here. So you can never compliment a woman and tell them they look beautiful today. <laughs> Why can't I just give you a compliment? You look beautiful. So I, I mean, what you mean? I'm only beautiful India with straight Marie. hair. There you go. India Marie and B Love. I can already tell how we starting it off. <laughs> What can, you what started you it know? off. But what I, I gave you, you a, when you don't nobody like that. Oh, you look you look good today. And you look I, no, no no no. I said you look beautiful today. So let's Whatever. give me give yourself I'm, more no, credit I'm than saying, good. That, that's the give type yourself of more credit that nobody likes. A girl be like, "Well, hear that." Oh, a girl will hear that. Okay, help me, help me. And they be like, "Huh? How do I look the other days?" So if I say you look good today, what's thank you, Beard? Th- there you go. Because today is today, right? Fellas, you feel me? Today how, how is did today. I look yesterday? You look beautiful yesterday. <laughs> so she, she wants me to say every day. I want to hear until, every day. You look beautiful on February 13th. That's what I'm gonna start saying. I'm just gonna put a date on it. Ain't the way your guy is saying, put a date on it. That's what I'm gonna have to start doing it because obviously saying you look beautiful today. Just doesn't pass the test. Thank you. And I didn't say that because your hair was flowing, even though look at look at it got a little bounce to the <laughs> out. <laughs> you see the vibes? <laughs> Straight hair don't care out here. This is crazy to me. But I like the curly hair too. I like you naked. Nah, I like it? you with clothes. I like you with curly hair. I like you sh- with straight hair. I like you. Now, sometimes I don't, but that's okay. But today, these last few days, I really haven't been enjoying you. <laughs> It's okay not to like your wife. <laughs> I still love her, but shit. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes we butt heads. But today, this this week, pretty good. Talk to me after tomorrow. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. Somebody out there kiss your lover in the mouth right now. Somebody out there, if you're not with him, send him a nude he right is, now. He is send in, him a nude. In, in rare form. Send him a Let him so, know you still got it. Um... Someone that I know Talk to was me. talking on their uh, close friends over the past weekend. Hey, hey, let me pause. Y'all still didn't add me to y'all close friends. She and everybody close friends. I am in a lot of people's close friends. I'm in like, I'm in like <laughs> 10. You know what I mean? If I want to be, I try to be enjoying Chavez's close friends. I'm just playing as Valentine's Day. Let me stop playing. <laughs> I see it all. Damn. I be seeing the low key dates. I be seeing the, Damn. the, uh, you know, the T, the BBLs. <laughs> <laughs> that's really the only all thing all I want to see. <laughs> I, I just want to see stuff. the BBL. But anyways, she this, but this person is married, and she was like, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, and for those who have been in a marriage for like more than four or five years, okay, like what do you do? Like how do you talk sexy at this at this point? But especially the married couples that have already had kids. Yeah, you know how like, I'm giving it up. What do I? <laughs> she was like, "What do I say? Like nothing is a mystery mystery anymore, especially if you've had kids." And I was so she was taking suggestions on like what you should say. <laughs> um, Here we go. I know. So, I, I, but it, it's a matter of. I know what kind how of episode many, this is. How many married couples with children are still sending very nasty text messages to go. each other? Yep. To get the party going. Yep. When you get home later that night. Yeah. No. Nah. And then, like, beside the text messages, when you get home, just go for it. Like, when, I can't. I I don't know when the last time she just grabbed some meat and just got to it. Like, you know what I mean? Like this. Not saying you don't do that, but you know, back in the day, you were a little horn dog. You said that on one of these podcasts. You said you were, I, I would walk in and you would grab me. So when it was the last time your husband just walked in the door, ladies, your, your boyfriend, and you said, 
Come here, let me see something. Pow, pow. Gave him a little one of those and got the party started. So how okay, did you talk dirty? Okay, first of all, I just spent the last year pregnant, so... So you lost all I, your mojo. <laughs> I didn't lose it. I just wasn't feeling well. You know I wasn't feeling well. Don't BB King say? Like, I was never feeling gone. good enough to go and just, like, smack your... And you kind of got... You got on my nerves a lot this pregnancy. So, you know they say when your... Damn. You know they say when your kid come out looking just like their daddy, they must have got on their nerves. That's how I feel with this one. Because she is... looks just like her daddy. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> That's my girl, though. And speaking of, she's on camera right now. And we got her live. She's in the building. But go ahead and get done. Uh, tell well, me. No. Well, tell you what. How would you spice it up? Like, what would you say nasty to me right now to get the the party started? I don't. Well, so that was like the basis of the conversation. Like, do you even still know how to do it? Nah, like, I don't even it. know what to say. You lost it. You need, you need to practice. I then. would rather just send a nude. And what? The, I mean, I see that in person. Now, if I'm at work, I'm at work right now, but if I'm at work or if I'm like away and then you're at home and you sit, hit me with the nude or a video, don't just send me a nude. We too grown now. Send me a video. Cause you know what I'm saying? Guess what? You're my wife. I've seen everything I need to a see. A video. You know what kind okay. of video. You can send me, send me, send me. You can do something like that, right? Send me one of these. You know what I'm saying? So you, so you want to And I'm like, who? okay, that's going to make me drive home from wherever I am to come home and give you some of this Valentine's Day love. So you want a video of me playing with myself. Now, that, I didn't that, say that. That would, that would be enough. Now, you said that I'm coming home. <laughs> because let me tell you what I know. <laughs> the car has already been started. It ain't got to warm up. You know what I mean? I can just get in the car. And press the gas. <laughs> the ignition is already been. Oh, I want to sing a song right there. Oh, now listen. Can I say this? If you guys are out there and you got your Valentine's playlist and one of those songs are on there, I don't blame you. You know what I'm talking about. Man, I was in the beauty shop. And it came on, didn't it? I was in the beauty Come shop on, man, getting talk my about hair it. done. And you know, usually when you go to the shop, especially Girl. like a real like black beauty shop, you know, they got the playlist playing they and the vibes are going. Bump. And uh you remind me of my Jeep camo. I'm singing. And I was like Forgive me, ladies. Listen, when I say <laughs> Somebody out there just said it right then. So, I'm a person where when I, like, when it comes to artists and, like, their values and their morals, like, if they do stuff like yeah. that, I don't listen to you them out. anymore. Like, She's I'm out. out the door. I, I'm out. Um, So, I have not listened to any R. Kelly songs, like, at all. Can't since all that first, I, I, you know, all the stuff blew up in this face. Like, I haven't listened to any R. Kelly songs. And so I was in the shop and I was like, dang it, why this song gotta be so good? I know. I didn't sing it, though. You thought about it. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Sometimes, man, you can't do nothing but let the spirit move you. When you hear Not that, the come spirit. on. The, oh, spirits everywhere. Don't you talk about nobody rose course. You got spirits all over the house. Ooh, we not the we. Oh, the only anyway. thing that song makes you want to do is have sex. Come on, man. So, so, so if you send me a new or a video with that playing in the background, I'm on the way. <laughs> I don't even care where I am. So I think that's what we're missing now. I think because we've it's, got in such a place where, obviously, right, we can see it whenever we want to. But sometimes it's about dressing it up, right? We love our cars. But it's something about when it get washed. When you get in your car, when it first get washed, it goes down. So I do feel like that, you know, it's kind of spice things up, adding a little, adding a little shine onto your car. It's the never over- hurt nobody. But I think what it could boil down to is just like the overall complacency yeah. that you fall into when it comes to long term relationships. Because I think we talked about this on last year's Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> um, like the playlist. Sometimes. So it's like, you know, I got y'all. Back in the day, I help you out. When you first started that, I mean, you know, me and Bear, we've been on this train for a long time. We we pushing 12, 13 years at this point. And 26. you know, when it first started, Bear kept the playlist, okay? He kept the playlist. And so we ain't see no playlist. Hell, when last time we had sex of music. They be in my in head. General. So I always like have I said, sex of music just, in my head. 
but they're not loud. So it's not even <laughs> just like the, you know, the sexy, raunchy text messages, yeah. like the pictures and the, the playlist, like you just fall into a habit of routine. You know what's crazy, though? I said something a minute ago that I want to bring back. And I'm not saying that's right. That's wrong. It's absolutely oh, wrong. Oh, keep going. I didn't mean to cut you off. Keep going. Keep <laughs> well, going. no, no, no. I wanted to because I'm saying that and I don't want people to think that that is how it's supposed to be. It's, mm -mm. it's not how it's supposed to be. It's just kind of naturally what has happened, especially after you have that first kid. Yes, it is. Within that first year, you're trying to figure out where exactly are you even supposed to have sex because your kid is in your bedroom. No, so. I'm telling you. <laughs> And I ain't trying to and be quiet. And the time. <laughs> I'm the not time trying to be quiet. But you know what? I said something in the top of the pod. That will bring back. Something else that can make things exciting and fun again is not the raunchy text messages, not the lingerie, but being cool with one another. I feel like when we are at this level, when we're cool and everything has been going good all week, when you enter intimacy after that, Everything gets heightened, right? We had fun all week. We've been laughing all week. We've been playing all week. Now, when it's time to go to there, it's that much more enjoyable because we can enjoy each other's company at that time. True. But listen, I say all that to say this. Even though I do want the emotional intimacy, I don't see nothing wrong. We're having a little bit of nastiness thrown in the mix. So if I come home and you got a um, diamond hanging out your rear end, then I'm okay with that. <laughs> Listen, it's something new. Like, what if you walk in the door and your lady is bent over across the bed on all fours with her butt tooted up in the air and all you see coming out of her butt is one of those diamond things. But the way our life is set up right I'm now. I'm okay with that. We got two kids. We got two kids. One is in here with us right now. Full <laughs> transparency. We are recording the pod. And we thought Shiloh was going to be cool, calm, and collective. And sweet. she turned up. She woke up and, and turned up. So we brought her in here to record the pod with us. So we have a director, which is Shiloh. And still, the executive producer is <laughs> always going to be Blake. But anyway, so. Uh, like I say, our, our life is not set up for those type of things. That, that, that's going to have to be a vacation situation. See what I'm saying? So I keep telling y'all, vacation. Uh, we're, we're going on vacation in July, just, you know, he and I. And uh, now I know, get the diamond for the butt for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> get the butt diamond. <laughs> Listen, man, if I come in and see that, I don't know if I want to laugh or I just get in and splash. Like, I don't like, know what hey, you want to do. Go down to the lobby and give me some juice. And when he come back up, I'll be on all fours with the, with the diamond the hanging blood out my blood. Blood. Ready to go. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm going to react to that. I don't know what to do. But there's something new. So that's what I'm A saying. You can, you can figure out things to do that you and your significant other haven't done yet. And then just pull them out. Like, don't even tell them. Surprise them. Fellas, you too. Cool. Speaking about surprises. I was talking about, hold on, I gotta, I gotta do something <laughs> first. I gotta do something first. During the week, <laughs> we got D. I have a feeling you heard it, guys. Oh, no, I don't forget, I, don't forget I got it written down. I forgot to write it down on my board, but I got it written down. Talk to him. This is your surprise. I, uh, you want, I can kick it off. So, well, you know, when we were talking about um, Valentine's Day gifts and things right. the past week or so, um, I didn't mention this idea because I didn't want to give it away. So I already knew what my Valentine's Day gift was. I had had it booked and we were ready to go. So I decided <laughs> to book us facials. Come on, man. And the logic behind it is, you know... Barry likes to take care of his skin over the past, I would say, five years. He's been into, you know, skin. He he has a at least a three-step routine now. One, two, three. And um, he, you know, wears his little eye patches for his bags and stuff. College. I originally wanted to book us massages, but Barry does not like massages. You have to know your spouse. He it's doesn't like style. that type of thing. So I was like, we're not going to do the massage. I was just going to get one by myself. It's not my style. But since he's, you know, suddenly into his skin and anti-aging things, it's we're going gonna to go for a facial. So um, they have a place where you can just get facials. It's called Face Foundry. This is not like a... It's not an ad. ad or nothing <laughs> like that. But, but it could be. Um, I did work with them on like some influencer stuff when they first open up so that's how i knew about the place so it's in nashville it's in the gulch 
Um, I was like, oh, we could just go there. It's no pressure. He ain't got to take his clothes off. He just lay there on the bed, get his special. Whoa, 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 and whoa, so, whoa. Who said I feel pressured by taking my clothes off? I go to the gym for this situation well, so because the when the time why, comes to get naked, I'm always well, ready. Well, the reason why I asked that is because we went, it was our one year anniversary, we went to Mexico and we yeah. had a spa day. We did the couple's That's massage. Different. Bear walked in there. He said, I got to get naked, naked. Because so I didn't know. It's my, my, first, my first time. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, relax. I don't mind getting nude. So uh, I was like, this, this would just be easy. So we started the day with a late dinner. Or I'm sorry, a late lunch. We, late lunch. we did lunch at Sadie's. That was really good. And then we went to Face Foundry for the facials. Yep. facials. Now, I knew he was going to like it. But I didn't know he was going to like it the way he liked it. What came out there feeling preserved. You hear me? I feel like I was for real. And y'all know what I mean. For real, at least 98 years old. Bro look like he's still 28. That's how I felt when I walked out. So what did you what did you think? Like when you saw us walk, first of all, we walked in there. He was like, I, I know I ain't getting no facial now. He, uh, he had already started complaining I did, as soon like as he walked man. in. And I was just no like, man. will you just shut up? That's shut up and do the things. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was I thinking? I think that for everybody out there, fellas, us really we can't be scared we can't be scared well we can't be afraid to try new things if you're out there and you're sticking to the same routine and you're sticking to the same stuff you always do broaden your horizon listen i was that naive and i was that shallow and closed off too i didn't know that facials felt so good i told indian when we left i will be back every month with or without her i'm coming for me that's a me thing now. That's self-care. Yeah. So he finished his facial a couple minutes before I finished mine. And he was already at the front talking to his esthetician. Yeah. About all the things. She put that- me on game. <laughs> Don't get the jade roller. You got to get the, what's, what, what, which one? The rose quartz. The rose uh, quartz. You can't get the jade because the jade is too coarse. It'll mess up your skin. You see what I'm saying? And when you're dealing with your puffy eyes, you got to get the de-puffer and de-stressor. That's what I'm learning. She put me on game. I was so excited when I went in there. I was nervous at first. And if you know me, when I get nervous, I don't do what other people do, like clam up. I talk so much when I get nervous. When I talk tell the whole you, time. Man. I, was, I just couldn't even, but first of all, like the way it's set up, it's not like completely closed off. So it's not like a room where you go in and close the door. It's like There's a pediatric curtains. dentist's office. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's curtains dividing you from the next table. And it's very quiet in there. They have relaxing Serene. music. It's, you know, low light. And he's across from me. And all I hear is him talking throughout the whole thing. And I'm the just like, time. why will he not stop talking? They I made a friend. such... A good conversation, whatever they were talking about. I made a friend. She was hooking my face up, and at the same time, we were having a good talk. Like, I think, oh, whoa, stop the press before we move on. When I got back there, the lady said, do you want to wait at Blanket? Now, literally, (laughs) I would never do this because I get hot when I lay down. Like, something about my body gets hot. But I looked in her face, and I said, damn it, went in wrong put it on she put that weighted blanket on me i put this on everything i thought lizzo was riding the pine i said oh this feels amazing now i wouldn't sleep with a weighted blanket on me because i still get too hot but for that little nap time period like an hour stint i think a weighted blanket is the perfect way to go i think we should get one i think blake would enjoy it like i think it would like really like regulate him i think we're just gonna get yeah we're gonna get a weighted blanket for the house well, listen, I feel like, yeah, boy, I said, oh, if this how Lizzo feels, I need me one of these because this is amazing. So they start you off, you sniff your essential oils. Yes, ma'am. And then they get to go into town on your face. And look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill, queen. You're ridiculous. Anyways, Yikes. it's just, I don't know. It's it's a really good experience. But I, I don't think I have ever had him rave about a gift. Now, granted, I'm a good gift gifter, she, especially she does. when it comes to him. She like, does. I get him really good gifts. Uh, but this one, like, top, top them all, I felt like he would not stop talking about it. Because the thing about it is, listen, you've all, we've been together for now 12, 13 years, right? And we've seen and given every type of gift from watches to experiences to jewelry, you name it, we've probably purchased these items for one another. 
This was something totally left field for me. I'm talking about what I'm aware. And I told her, she was like, this is where, you know, be casual, be comfortable. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm throwing on a Nike tech suit and we're going to head out. This whole time, I'm thinking we're going to be jumping over stuff. I'm going to be shooting the gun, like doing an obstacle course or something else. And it was totally different. So when I got there, I was already thrown off because <laughs> in my mind, I had an expectation of what I thought the day would be. But when we pulled up, it was that much more cool because I'm like, wow, this is this shit is great. The smells, the oils, the uh, 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 catering. It was amazing. <laughs> I would go back. I told him not. I would. I'm going to go back next month. And I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. So. And Fellas, it's affordable. You, like most of the facials there $75. are seventy five dollars, and then you tip your esthetician. Um, You're looking at about a ninety dollar thing. There's only like one other massage there that's more than that seventy five dollar ones, but you got different options to choose from. I just booked him for the basic. It was the clean and natural. I was like, let's just start basic, and then he can decide if he likes it from there. And I told her, she said, when I go back, I can get the cool sculpting now. For everybody who doesn't know, like me, what cool sculpting is, I do know because I, I do know what cool sculpting is. Like, and you know, like pop my face with the little things. She was like, "No, it won't leave marks that much, but you should definitely try that one next time." So I'm on board. I'm trying a cool sculpting on my face. So once again, I'm telling all the homies out there, if you haven't done it. Take you and your lady on that experience. She put me on. Now I'm putting y'all on. Take you and your lady. Your lady gonna love you. Come on, baby. Let's get a facial. But don't tell her she looks beautiful today. Tell her <laughs> she looks beautiful every day. And then say, come on, baby. Let's go get a facial real fast. And then we, we, as we're walking out, out to the car, he's like, man, y'all be holding out on shit. Bruh. I was like, what? Women be knowing all the game. Like all the, you know what I'm saying? Like all the self-care game. The women got it. I tease her. I tease her a lot about all the stuff she has in the bathroom. It's about uh, 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 all type of stuff in there. I mean, stuff stacked on top of stuff for her face, for her skin. But if it feels like that, I'm about to go rummaging through, see what I can put on my <laughs> face and my skin because that was next level. It was a good experience, man. And I'm telling you, I feel like my Valentine's Day gift is going to pale in comparison to what she did for me. I'm not embarrassed to say it. Hers was better. So, at least you're getting something. <laughs> yeah, come on, give it up for me. You got 24 hours to fix it. No, nah, my gift is good. It's just oh, what you talking was, about? <laughs> my gift, all right, so, so this, I can back up a little bit. Let me back up and say this. During our outing this weekend, we could have gotten Beyonce tickets, right? We had them in our cart. We could have bought some nice seats and everything. However, I told India, hey, let's wait for her to come to Nashville. And the reason why is because, you know, we can spend a little bit more money on a little bit better seats and we don't have to buy a hotel room. We are already going on vacation in July. We're going on vacation again in um, November. We're going on vacation again, probably in October. October. And I'm like, hey, let's scale back because we can get a better deal in Nashville, maybe, maybe, and we don't have to buy a hotel room. So th I was gonna get you there for Valentine, but then I was like, you yeah, know was, what? I, I was, don't even I was worry expecting about it. The Valentine, I was. That's exactly what I was expecting, and that's exactly what I was gonna do. Give you there for Valentine's, but then I'm like, hey, let's call it audible. So, fellas, that's another good gift. If you can get your girl, it was just Valentine's Day today, but if you can get your girl some Beyonce tickets and tell her just, hey, give me a second, I'm getting you these tickets. Then I think that's a hell of a gift to get. But you just got to make sure you get them. Oh, I had them. We had them together. We both got what we wanted, said we wanted to sit, and we could have got the tickets. It was just the fact of I feel like I could save a little bit more money by holding off and waiting. I'm not saying everybody needs to do what I do, but I'm just saying. Put yeah. that out there. No, and I'm trying to go to some different places. I ain't trying to go to Atlanta. <laughs> and then look, too, it ain't about who got the best gift. It's about the thought. In the heart from the gift. You know, I give you a gift all the time. I gave you that gift. I gave, I you, gave you that you. gift. You had to two to tango now. I had to put that thing in and do what I did. Yeah, yeah. but I did far more work <laughs> okay. than you did. If 
You <laughs> say so. Speaking of work, this is something I want to talk about because I saw it online. So we got to talk about it real fast. Having a public argument. Do you know, have we ever had this come from Tab and her husband Chance? They was talking about public arguments and have they ever had one? When was the last time we had a public argument and how bad? Or have we ever had one? Do you remember? Was it bad? The last time we actually had a public argument was like an actual like full-blown argument. I mean, call it college. what you want. Call, yeah, right. That would have been in college. Um, we did have a pretty big disagreement a couple of years ago. Uh, remember, uh, one of our friends had a show at the or oh, at the Millennium House. Millennium House. I don't remember the jazz show. Who's playing okay. sax? Okay, I don't remember. You don't remember that energy that we was given that day? Nah, I don't remember. I I don't remember. So, what was it about? See, listen, that's the thing. You you forget about arguments that are minute. Like you forget about all those because it wasn't really probably nah, a big deal. This is a big deal. So I don't remember what was the cause. I'm nervous but now. we made it very awkward for everybody that was there. That's nasty. So bro. That's, that's so nasty. Marcus was playing the sax at the Millennium yeah. House. We we went in separate cars. But no, I'm and talking we about didn't how even we... sit together. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But well, I mean it wasn't awkward. We just we but we didn't argue there. It was awkward because the tension may have been in the room, right? But I'm talking about like arguing outside in public. And what the last time we did that it had to have been when I was in college. Yeah, I think that's the only time that we've done it when she was in college. Yeah. And I, I I remember that one now. We were at Bonefish at a restaurant. Um, first of all, I don't even like fish, so I took her there. Um, to make sure she and was that fed. ain't even the one I'm talking about. So this this happened a couple of times when I was in college. <laughs> we was just out here crazy though. Um, Bonefish, we made it so awkward for we were arguing about some, and probably back then it was because of me. I'm not gonna keep it real. This is because, uh, so the the waiter, I felt so bad me for the waiter. Too. Oh my god, it was the waiter that I felt bad for. We ordered that food. I said bring. I said bring the check. Food came on the table. She looked at the waiter dead in his face and said, "Hey, bring the check." And it's a go box. And I'm sitting back like, all right, cool. So let's go. And we both looked at it. We, we argued, though. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like out loud. It was like um, it was, it Jennifer was a, Lopez. It was a, it was a and, silent arguing. Like Jennifer Lopez, what's <laughs> cuz name? They was at the Grammys. when they argued at the Grammys. Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah. It was like that. But it was like, you want to go? We can go then. Well, how we going to go then? Well, let's get the check then. Well, let me get the check then. Now, we were doing this. When the waiter came back over there too, so we let it be known we weren't on good terms. So he brought the check and he or she, man or woman, it was a man. He bought the check and we checked on out. Now I will say this: I do believe it's okay to have a small argument or a small disagreement in public if one of you are mature enough to end it quickly. Like you got to be able to de-escalate stuff very quickly before it becomes real big and you create a scene i feel like i can say this and i feel comfortable with this we are both at a level that we will never argue in public and let it get blown out of proportion or loud Mm -mm. no because we don't even argue in the house loud (laughs) yeah and I, and, I, and I think it's embarrassing for not only you, but for your significant other and for all parties involved, like yeah. she just said. And it's not conflict avoidance. It's just tabling the discussion until there is an appropriate time to have it. I'm not about to fight with you about some dumb stuff out in public. Like everybody looking at us like, oh, she's going to hit her. Call the police. No, I don't even want that type of energy brought my way. So we're going to wait until we get home to settle this, this difference yeah. of opinion. Um, Bear talks about his best friend Philip a lot. Uh, we've argued a lot in front of Philip. <laughs> oh yeah, it's different. Though. Uh, and that was like a whole, but like it's I different. said, not recently. This is years ago. Yeah, years ago, that's different. Yeah, Philip. That <laughs> Bear's friends thought I was absolutely nuts back then. Um, absolutely nuts. That's that's a totally different ball. Like arguing in front of like. 
um, what, I, what, I, what I'm going to call regular company is different than arguing outside in public air. Let's say if you go to Walmart and you argue with your significant other about something that she's picking up that you don't want to eat, then that's a little bit much. And I think you can scale that back and figure out what to do when you guys go home. Yeah. I mean, we, we've had some, like I said, full blown arguments. That hasn't happened too often. Um, but to definitely some testy conversations. Oh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there has been definitely some tests. I'll give you one that we keep tabling that I, that I wasn't going to bring up because we've been great. So I hate to even go down this path, but here I go. I think that one of the arguments that we are running into now has a lot to do with the alignment of goals and a relationship and couples, right? I think that a lot of things that I find important and a lot of things that she find important are on two different mind frames. For instance, I'll just go ahead and tell y'all, here we go. Come on in. Um, I work real hard and I can get hyper focused on things that sometimes everything else outside of those things become not a priority. I would be terrified if he took um, Adderall. Everything else. I would be absolutely terrified if he took Adderall. Everything else doesn't come a priority. Like um, Shannon Sharp said something to Ocho Cinco that I'll probably insert right here. For everybody to hear. But they were talking about why he never got married. And he said because he thought that every time he would find a woman, she could handle being second to football. But come to find out when they got together, that wasn't true. I feel like that I have some of those same traits as like athletes who want to be the best at their sport. You can fix that. My daughter's sucking the bottle, and the bottle is falling. No, don't say that out loud. Oh, my bad. like they terrible parents. No, we the best parents. We got everything set up. We got like a whole rig going on right now. You should see us doing this podcast. We podcast, we work, and we feed our babies all at the same time. Get with it. Will you shut up? Oh, my bad. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, being able to be second to something that somebody may love is not it's not something a woman is willing to do. Right now, I sometimes say, Andy, hey, I'm focused on work. Not work for other people, but work for us. Work for the household. But I'm telling her, if she gives me this time right now, hopefully um, in a few months or whenever the case may be, we neither one of us will have to deal with anything. Right? Her opposition is what? Or her position on this whole thing is what? I don't no, care I how need much. Time. You, yeah, yeah. I don't care how much you need to do the other things or whatever. I still have. I still need one on one time. I still need your undivided attention, and and that's not every day. So you got seven days in a week. You make time for what you want to make time for. And while you're hyper focused on growing the podcast and, you know, all these other endeavors that you're trying to do, none of that matters if our relationship is not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So I would hate for you to do all this work. The podcast gets to where it needs to be and our relationship is not where it needs to be. And then here we are in the public eye. And we're beefing behind closed doors. Because what I am not about is being fake. Like, Here she comes. Here she comes. What y'all see from us is 100% real. A lot of times we record this podcast, we just hit go. Yeah. It's nothing. It's rehearsed. Very rare do we have to stop the podcast and re-record. We don't even do that. So whatever comes out of our mouths is like what y'all get. Yeah. And so if you're not taking care of... Like, the podcast is nothing without us. <laughs> like, it means nothing without the people that's doing it. So, it's like, if you can't find the time to give me your undivided... Uh, just just spend it one-on-one -on -one time together. Like, effort. Then, I'm not going to match your energy on this podcast stuff. Because it doesn't matter to me. I told him, I said, my you marriage did. is more important than the podcast. You did. So, or anything else that, you know, we're working on. It and doesn't then, matter. And see, my rebuttal is this, right? 
I feel like I say this a lot. If everybody does a little, nobody has to do a lot. If we talk about and outline the things that we want to do, the goals that we have set up and then go out and tackle those, let one of us lead the charge for that goal while the other one takes the burden off and does other things, I feel like the household itself will be a united front. Now, I do think that I let some things slip through the crack when it comes to her emotional needs. Like I don't plan as much as I used to plan because I want to spend my free time after I get off one job doing another job. Like I feel like, hey, I'm I'm working around the clock. And then when I'm not working around the clock, now we got two kids. I'm trying to get the so then he's disappointed when he's not getting sex. And and I say <laughs> that I'm withholding sex, but if we ain't talking if you're if you're barely talking during the day, I'm not gonna go drop some ass off to you at night. It's just not happening. So I've stepped back. And I'm like, you're gonna have to figure it out because I've already I've already said what I need. She yeah, has, she and laid it out. But I've also already said that what I need. It's not gonna come before the other one. It's not. And I've already told her what I need. So this is what I'm saying. Somehow along the way, the goals need to align so we both know what we need. How can we both get what we need? You're the wow. problem. How am I the problem? You're the problem. <laughs> See, I don't know. I I'm not the so, problem. So like you okay, fix that, you figure out how to better divide your time. That's what I'm trying to do. So that's the argument that we are constantly having right now. How to divide time so that she feels adequate enough. Not adequate, but you know what I mean. You feel like getting the adequate amount of time in the relationship. And I feel like I'm getting the adequate amount of time managing the other things and other projects. Go ahead and say something. I feel like you're about to shook your head. Well, no, because it's one thing to be a good gift giver. It's one thing to be a good provider. It's a completely different thing for you to be emotionally a well-rounded overall good husband. I'm not saying that you're a bad husband. What are you trying to say? I'm just saying that your priorities lack. Or but I'm so just, focused on the household. I'm so focused on providing, making sure we're straight, not only for now, but for the future. But none of that matters if you you get there and I'm tapped out. I hope you don't tap out because I'm <laughs> tapped in. <laughs> I'm so, going to try to bring you back. Come on back. No, it didn't mean like you wonder. Like, I feel like, and that's another issue why I feel like some marriages fail because their goals aren't aligned. And so I was actually thinking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like you need to, because also there's no reason why you should have, why you have to work eight hours a day for your job. Talk to him. And then you're still working. Like you work, (laughs) nigga, you work like seven to five. And then from 530 to 830, you work on other stuff and you plan with Blake. And so it's like, you're going to have to figure out designated days. Like you need content days or whatever the case may be. You you have to figure out a better way to divide your time. If I could clone myself, I'm talking about there's no limit to what I could do. And mind you, I'm not the only person that has told him this. Oh, yeah. A lot of people tell me this. Like, my mama told me I'll be overworked. It's just it's not just a me thing or even like his best friend, Philip. They used to go hiking every Sunday, and they loved it. Philip quit hiking because he said that he needed a rest day. That broke my heart. I want to keep hiking. He was like, on Sundays, I just kind of like to do nothing in my house with my wife. <laughs> it breaks my heart. So anybody want to go hiking with me? Let me know. It's I'm like you keep plugging in. So now, even still, like he's still pitching new ideas to me. He's still pitching <laughs> new things to D. And last week, I had to tell him like she got mad at me last I week. I don't want to hear another idea until you figure out how to manage the ideas that you currently have. I'm trying to take it to the next level, and I want her to come with me. But in order for us to do that. I need her on board. In order for her to be on board, I know what I need to do as a person emotionally. Now, at the same time, can I toss it back to you and say, do you know what you need to do to help me out? You keep talking about the podcast, Mary. No, I'm saying in general, relationships in general. Like, what can you do to relieve some of the burden that I have to carry right now? I don't 
know because you're see, uh, you, see, but because all of a sudden she don't know because that means well, we're not because aligned. I'm far more vocal about my needs than what you are about yours. Show like you just yeah, look at this. I am. <laughs> I'm far more vocal about my needs than what you are. You like to hold, not only do you like to overwork yourself, but you also like to hold in how you're feeling. And so I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. But if you're talking about as far as helping you grow the podcast and content creation and all Just those no, sorts no, of no, things. No, 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 See, you're missing the point, though. I don't know. So what exactly do you need from me? See, don't focus on like that part, right? What are you talking about Focus then? on what else you can do, like to just like be a part of the idea. Like talk about oh. it. Like, how can you help cultivate well, that, well, the so idea? That's, but that's how the can thing. You, but you like, hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. But like the other day, you came to me with a phenomenal plan. Yesterday, man, not even the other day. It was yesterday. You said something got into you and you came with like two or three ideas. And I loved them. Loved every idea you brought to me. My thing is with the idea, are you going to carry them out? Those are my ideas. But I'm, well, one of them was a collective. So I'm saying with those ideas. Well, yeah, I can do that. See? Because it's in my wheelhouse. <laughs> the thing is, he used See? to ask me for help with things that are just not in my wheelhouse. Because I've ventured into so many different things, I know that I don't like shooting video. I know that I don't like editing. I know that I don't like cutting down clips. I know I don't like that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, if he doesn't hit, if he wants me to help with it, he doesn't necessarily have the extra time to do it. We need to hire somebody to do it. That's like that is what it's boiled down to when it comes to stuff like that. No. But what this other idea that he's talking about is in my wheelhouse. It's planning of events. I like to do that kind of stuff. I'm naturally good at that kind of stuff. You, you like, you got to use me where I'm useful. <laughs> and I, see, I can't see. sit and clip no videos all day. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but it got to be done, right? <laughs> Yeah, it got to be done. So right now, I think the biggest discrepancy that we have in our marriage and in our relationship is like, hey, who's doing what? How are you feeling what? And what needs to get done? With that being said, some people have an advantage that we don't have. And I keep going back to this. As soon as I can hire some help that you trust, oh, I'm doing that. If I just had one or two extra hours of a, a, a day with somebody that can help out, not even help me do this stuff, just watch the kids, right? I'm good to go. So I'm going to hire somebody. I'm looking for you out there. You, If you hear me, holla at me. Or even if you know somebody that's a good nanny, let me know. Because I'm looking. I'm looking for... But well, that's where we are right now. I've already... Let's see. see, see, see I'm just going to keep like you, what you need to... Like, there's seven days in the week. If I need want, all seven. <laughs> you want to be lonely. <laughs> hey no, I don't want to be lonely. I just you do. want to. <laughs> you I just be don't want my family to have to want for anything. I'm gonna work. We don't. That's the thing. I'm like, gonna work man, for it all. You have the same issue that I feel like a lot of men have. Like just work and work and work. And I feel like you learned that from your dad. And I'm like, there's more to life than just working yourself to death. Every single day. But to get to the like, point where I want to no, be, that's what we got to do. I understand that, but I can't live like that. I'm not going to live like I that like either. Just give to, me like a month or two, right? But no, no, no. This, is, this, is, this has been longer than a month or two. So but I I'm almost there. Buy in. <laughs> come on. Come on. Keep going. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've already told you. Like she did, she did, she did. I, I've already told you. I'm not exactly sure what you're confused about at this point she because did. we're going on dates, man. I'm gonna find somebody to do it. Get my relationship up, man. Keep talking. <laughs> you made me mad. I made him mad. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like if perfect time, it would be different if I was the only one saying it. But I'm not. He's had multiple people say, say this. To him, um, and some of you should take, you know, a little bit of that advice. We'll see. You need planned content days. Like, we'll see for like two that two or three days a week on these days. It's these not just about days. the content days. Don't though. yes, it is because that's what you're spending your time doing. Oh, okay. So from uh, on two to three days a week after you get off work from six to eight, this is what I'm doing. Period. Don't bother me. This is what I'm working. That can't be an everyday thing. I got you. 
But I also need you to align with me. We'll talk more about the goal alignment, but I got to talk about this because I heard it yesterday. Here we go. Now unqualified advice from B-Love and B-Love's relation I got the keys, the keys, the keys. Yesterday, I was chilling at the homie's house watching the Super Bowl. Um, And me and one of his cousins started talking. And she listened to the pod. And she brought up a, a quick story. She said that she's dating this guy. But the guy, well, not even but. She's dating this guy. Great guy. Everything's good. He's cool and everything. She likes to travel. My man cannot get a passport, and she has a little bit more paper than he has. They are a little older, like when I say older, in their 30s. What should she do? This is not even WWID, but this is kind of a tag team. In that situation, he can't get a passport. She's the travel agent, matter of fact. Why he can't get a passport? He got a federal case against him. Okay. But everything else, that she know that that's in his past. Everything else checks out. How does that work? If you are a... Well, I mean, I know a couple of felons. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to ask him. You can't well, get I mean, your passport. Is it, like that, you can't, I mean, can't. Is it that you can't ever get your passport, or is it just while you're on papers? I guess while you're on papers, but I'm not. I don't know that for sure. I've never been to jail. Just being honest, don't know anything about that. Somebody help us out with I'm that. I'm gonna ask. Um, but what would you? What should she do? I told her I my think advice. She should just take her trips. Like. Yep. Just go where I you want to go. Yeah, I mean, it's not your fault that he's a, you know, it's not your fault that he's in this situation. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you shouldn't it. have to hinder your life. And I feel like he should be understanding that you do want to travel and see the world. Um, you know, take the trip by yourself. Take the trip with your girlfriends. Take the trip with your family members. You know, until he's in a situation to take the trips with you. And I always tell people there are beautiful places that you can go right here. That's in the what US. I told her. I said like, you ain't you been just, to half of the places in the United yeah, States. Yeah, like if you just really want to go to Palm Springs, they have some beautiful places that Key you can West, visit Florida. in there. San Diego, yeah, West, um, Utah got some nice places. You Arizona, ain't been to Montana. Uh, there's places out there. There's tons of adventures right here in the United States. So if you just really want to take a trip with him, stay, you know, stay here. And she did bring up the fact that she could cruise with him because she doesn't have to get off the boat when they go on cruises. So I'm like, go on cruises. You get off the boat. Yeah. He stays back. You come back on and y'all still, you can still travel. And I told her, it, I asked her, is this an excuse for you to kind of separate yourself from the situation because to me it didn't seem like a big enough red flag for her to start trying to figure out how to maneuver how to get away from it to me it only seemed like a small blip in something that she can get around yeah but that's why like with the beginning of the relationship you lay the facts out that's a fact and you decide if that is something that you want to stick with in the beginning unless you got together when you were very young like Barrett and I <laughs> yeah, at that point, if she get, if, she, if my girl I was went 19, to jail, so. if, <laughs> if my girl went to jail, I would know about it at that point. Like I would already, I would already have known about it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think you just got to stick it out. Travel um domestically, find things and places where you can go here. And just stick with him. If There's this is no the reason. person that you feel like you want to go the distance with. There you go. Now, I told her that too. If it's somebody you don't even see yourself with for the next two or three months. Cut this off right now because you know better. This time you're leading yourself on and you're leading him on. Because usually the red flags are present far be far before you actually break up. Talk to him. So, you know, if whatever his situation is, um, like if you don't mind that, then just make a way. Go places here. Better not have had he Hawaii. Was probably one of my most like my favorite vacations to date. And you can keep going to Hawaii. Yeah. Plenty like, of islands. And right, exactly. Like I can't wait until the kids get older and we take them to Hawaii. Like it's such a beautiful place. Um But, but don't limit yourself explore, either yeah. though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like don't think you have to limit your experiences because of him. <laughs> Bring him up, elevate him, show him stuff here that he hasn't seen here while you Find out and go with your friends and your family to places internationally. When Baird and I, um, when Baird and I first started dating, and we started traveling together. A lot of the places we went, that was our like my first time in those states. So like, I didn't get to travel much growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I could probably, I, 
using both my hands, not even using all 10 fingers was the amount of place like other states that I had been to within the U.S. So, and I've had a beautiful time in all the places that I've been to in the United States at this point. There are some places I would never go, like I probably wouldn't want to go back to, but Mm -hmm. I have enjoyed seeing what's here. So She got with a true player like me and I had to broaden her horizons. Give it up for me one time. I know you want to do WWID, but I got to go somewhere real fast. (laughs) This has to stop. It's going to cease. This is what I mean about working too much. Yeah, then he got a meeting. So I can't even eat. Tell the people where they can find you. India.Marie on Instagram. Be sure to go to the YouTube page, hit subscribe, uh, go to Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast. Leave us a five star review. Five stars. If you think you're going to leave something else, don't leave nothing. Or DM me <laughs> and we can talk about it. We can fight it out. Talk it out. <laughs> Buy whatever you want. I'm with everything. You can find me at BLOVE1911 on all social platforms. Hopefully, I'll get my Facebook page back one day and we'll see. But also, go to She and Our Podcast on Instagram, She and Our Podcast at gmail.com. Leave us a message. We love to hear from you. But in the meantime, in between time, you know the vibes. It's been real. It's been fun. She, she, she and her. And her. I, 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 I,